Good morning, everyone. Today marks day 22 of being in Buenos Aires. Holy moly, time is flying. I feel like I just got here. I was not prepared for the fact that it's been like 22 days already. Lately, I have been pushing my workouts and making amazing progress and feeling really strong in the gym and being really excited about this gym progress. And I think it's because, you know, I did Project Comeback. I slowly ramped up my exercise frequency. So I started with just training two days a week and now I'm up to training four days a week plus like a little something something sprinkled in like hit or yoga or stretching or something on a fifth day. And now it's been a couple weeks that I've been consistent with the four days a week. So my workouts have been like super consistent week to week. And so I'm able to see a lot of that progress that you can see when you start being super consistent. And it's just, it's very exciting but not only am I being consistent in the gym and like optimizing my workouts to like optimize performance and strength etc but I'm also doing a lot of things outside the gym that also help optimize my gym performance so today I wanted to kind of take you through all the other things that you can do to help optimize your workouts to lose fat to build muscle to get stronger whatever it may be that you want to do because your workout efficacy is not just down to what you do in the gym. There's a lot of other factors that can affect that. So we're gonna go through all that today because I'm still not comfy taking you guys to the gym with me with the camera because I would just feel super awkward because we go at a really busy time and there'd be a lot of people and they'd all be watching me film myself and I'm this little foreigner girl that can't even speak Spanish very well and so it's just awkward not taking my camera to the gym. So again, actually, first things first, before I get into the rest of my day is last night. I prioritized sleep. I've been trying to prioritize sleep. Sleep is like one of the absolute top things you can do to make your workouts more effective and more efficient and help you reach any of your goals faster because not only does a good night's sleep improve the effectiveness of your workout the next day because you're well rested you have a lot more energy and so you can give a lot more in the gym but the sleep after your workout also affects the efficacy of that workout because sleep is when you recover from your workout so if you do a really good workout and then get a really bad night's sleep the next night you're not actually going to get as much out of it as you would have if you had gotten a really good night's sleep that night so anything you can do to boost sleep quality and make sure you're getting enough quantity sleep is going to just go so far in helping you get more effective workouts and reach your goals. Okay, first things first, there's two more coffee places near our apartment that I wanna try before I actually start kind of scaling back on caffeine again and just not having it every day. But I have been enjoying new foods, new coffee shops way too much to be actively trying to cut back on caffeine while I have been exploring Buenos Aires. So, two more and then Maybe, no promises. Maybe I will start cutting back on caffeine, who knows? I found like the best coffee shop here, so might just go to it every day. little mochaccino for me and a cafe con leche for le boyfriend honestly i tried them both still not as good as our favorite coffee shop that we found so far nothing has beaten the coffee shop that is basically closest to us which is just honestly unsurprising because that coffee shop that's closest to us is some of the best coffee i've ever had in my life so it'd be hard to top that. So because I've been being super consistent with the gym, I have been able to apply progressive overload a lot more, increase my workout intensity. I've been like hitting those weights hard, pushing the weight, just like training. I don't wanna say aggressively, cause it's not aggressive, but excitedly with enthusiasm. And because I've been doing this, I've been getting a little bit more sore lately. Now I wanna emphasize here that soreness is not an indicator of a good workout. If you are sore consistently after all your workouts, you're probably doing too much, pushing yourself too hard, or you're not recovering well enough, which is mostly what this video is about. So you should not be aiming to be sore after all of your workouts. I'm currently getting sore because this is the first time in a long time, almost a year, like three quarters of a year, that I've been consistent with my workouts to the point where I can actually like push progressive overload. So this is the first time I'm progressively overloading in a while. So this is kind of a newer stimulus for my body, at least like in recent months. And so I'm getting sore. I don't expect 
to continue to get sore for weeks and weeks and weeks. But since I am pushing myself really hard and getting kind of sore, I am making sure I'm throwing everything at myself that I can to support exercise recovery. So one of the things that I've been making sure to add in creatine. I have an entire video about creatine, the benefits of it, the science behind it. So I'm going to leave a link down in the description box below to that if you want to check out more about creatine. But essentially how creatine works in the body for exercise performance and recovery is creatine is necessary for the synthesis of ATP, which is the like energy currency of the cells. So the more creatine you have to a certain point, like your body can only store so much creatine, but if you are at like the maximal storage of creatine, your body is at maximal production of ATP. So essentially creatine will help your muscle cells produce more energy for your workout so you can get a better, more effective workout. So it not only works on like the front end of your workouts to make them more effective by giving you more energy like sleep, it also works on the back end of your workouts to help with recovery. It can beneficially alter numerous cellular pathways that lead to muscle growth. For example, it boosts the formation of proteins that lead to the development of new muscle fibers. It also raises levels of IGF-1, which is a hormone that basically boosts muscle recovery and boosts muscle growth. And creatine is also probably the best studied supplement out there. It's well known for being very safe for consumption and being very, very effective at all of the things that I just talked about. So I like adding creatine into my routine when I am in a routine. Like if I am able to exercise consistently and regularly, especially if I have a specific goal, then adding creatine is beneficial. If you're resistance training regularly, you're looking to lose fat, to build muscle, increase exercise performance, even for non-resistance training. Like it can help boost endurance and stamina with running as well. So it's kind of an all across the board exercise enhancer. But basically if you're looking for one supplement that is a powerhouse of a supplement that is widely shown to be very safe and very effective for workout performance and recovery, creatine is your go-to. Generally, you want to look for creatine monohydrate. That's the one that is best studied. That's the one that shows the best absorption, the best efficacy, etc. And until recently, I didn't really have a favorite creatine because pretty much all creatine monohydrate is pretty similar. But Symbiotica recently came out with a creatine supplement specifically. And the thing about this is it's not just creatine, it also has L-glutamine in it. And they can work somewhat synergistically in the body to get you even more benefit. So first of all, they use liposomal delivery for their creatine, which in general, supplements that use liposomal delivery are higher bioavailability. So you're gonna absorb a lot more of them. Not every supplement needs to be delivered in liposomal form, but for some of them, if it is liposomal, you're going to be able to absorb more of it. And what that means is essentially the molecules are surrounded surrounded by liposomes, which just kind of helps the body shuttle the molecules to where they are best absorbed and utilized. So you're going to get really high absorption and bioavailability of the creatine in this and then with the L-glutamine. L-glutamine is an amino acid that has a lot of different potential benefits just because it is an amino acid. It's a building block of other proteins. It is critical for immune function. It also plays a role in intestinal health, helping with the integrity of the gut barrier. And then when it comes to exercise specifically, it has been shown to decrease soreness and and enhance recovery. So in that way, it kind of works really well with creatine to just help creatine with what it's doing. So you could just take regular plain creatine, but when you add in the L-glutamine and make everything liposomally delivered, you're gonna get a lot more out of the supplements. So that's why I deemed Symbiotica's creatine important enough to pack with me, to move to a different country so that I would have it with me. I didn't bring a lot of supplements with me, but this is one of the ones that I brought because I think it's so valuable to have, especially for where I personally am with my fitness journey. So if you are looking to boost your exercise performance, enhance recovery to help with whatever your fitness goals may be, I do highly recommend checking out Symbiotica's creatine. As always, you can use my code FIT15 to get yourself 15% off of any of their products. I'll leave a link down in the description box below. Check it out. But I'm gonna take this with my coffee and then make a wee bit of breakfast. Alrighty, here's what I have to turn into breakfast. We got three eggs, some Gruyere cheese. I can never say Gruyere cheese. Gruyere. You know what I'm trying to say. Avocado, kale, zucchini, onion, and some artichokes. Let's do this.
And we have breakfast for two. This lighting makes it look absolutely atrocious, but it's a bunch of eggs, vegetables, so full of protein, healthy fat, fiber, lots of micronutrients, all that good stuff. Perfect start to the day. So I'm about to get ready for the gym, and I just wanted to mention another thing that isn't technically quite on theme with the video, but is still a huge part of being able to make good progress in the gym with fat loss, building muscle, etc., etc., And that is consistency in the gym. Like exercise wise, that's probably the number one thing you can do. Cause you can have the best workout program on the planet created specifically for you and your body and your goals, etc., etc. But if you can't stick to it, the results that you're gonna get from it are not gonna be as good as a program that might be less optimal for you, but is something that you can stick to. Consistency is really what allows you to make progress because consistency is necessary for progressive overload which is what you have to do to continue to get your body to adapt i have a whole video about how to apply progressive overload and what it is i'll leave a link to that down in the description box below because recapping that would take five to ten minutes but in general to make progress in the gym every week you should be aiming to add a little bit more than the week before and if your workouts are all over the place you're not adding more you're just adding different which doesn't correlate with slow, steady, sustainable progress. Like if one week you're in the gym five days, the next week you're going three days, the next week you maybe go two days, the next week you go four days and then five days and then two days and then four days. You're just all over the place. You can't conceivably slowly add a little bit more each week if you're doing something entirely different each week. And that's precisely why I approached my project comeback journey the way that I did, which is building up slowly week after week to make sure that I could be consistent once I got to what I wanted to do. If I had just started out with trying to train five days a week after not being consistent for months and some weeks only getting in like one workout maybe, or like two half workouts, then there's, there's no way there's no way I would have been able to stick to training five days a week, like right off the bat. So I slowly ramped up, rebuilt the habit, rebuilt the discipline, and now I can be super consistent and it's super comfortable and easy for me to be training four days a week and then doing that extra whatever. And this just allows me to have more structure. It allows me to apply progressive overload. Speaking of structure, I think now that I am, like I've basically finished all the workouts in my program Project Comeback, like I was following my ebook for the most part, I finished all the workouts. So I think I'm gonna start doing my workouts for one of the workout programs that I have included in Fat Loss 101, because if you sign up for my new holistic sustainable fat loss course, Fat Loss 101, which registration opens June 1st, closes June 8th, you get a huge variety of workout programs to download and choose from while going through the course. So figure, might as well get a little head start on you guys and start one of the programs for myself. I think I'm gonna start that next week because I actually have one more workout this week and then Next week, I'll be starting a new week. But yeah, when it comes to workouts and the best thing that you can do to optimize progress, you need to prioritize consistency and progressive overload. If you can do those things, you're good. I mean, ideally good programming too. Obviously that's gonna make a difference. But yeah, like I said, good programming without those things is not gonna get you nearly as good results as mediocre programming with consistency and progressive overload. I'm off to the gym. One of my other favorite things about this city or cities like this is how walkable they are and how I can literally walk anywhere to do anything that I need. So like walking to get groceries, walking to get like six different coffee shops. I could probably walk to like 20 different coffee shops. Walking to the gym, walking for like literally everything. So I just like naturally hit 10,000 steps without trying. Whereas at home, I have to actively go for like at minimum a 20 minute walk up to like a 40 minute walk every evening in order to get to 10,000 steps. So like being active is so much more built in to just the lifestyle of living in this city, which is fantastic. But it's also great because it leads me to my next point, which is that staying active is really good for recovery and workout performance. Being sedentary is disadvantageous for workout recovery. You obviously don't wanna be like super active 24 seven, that's gonna be too much on your body. But if you've gotten in like, let's say you're doing, you know, four days a week of relatively intense resistance training, doing light walking, light mobility, light stretching, light yoga, etc., things that like 
get your body moving, get the blood flowing, are gonna be really good for recovery because getting the blood flowing means nutrients are flowing, which means your muscles are getting the nutrients that they need to repair. And if you're sedentary, that is less of the case. So that's generally why I recommend getting in about 10,000 steps a day is because, at least for me, it takes about an hour to walk 10,000 steps. So I know if I've hit 10,000 steps in the day, I have been active outside of my workout for at least an hour because I don't track steps while I am working out and so that's kind of my goal so either 10,000 steps or like an hour of activity ideally spread out throughout the day not concentrated in like another hour of time because then you're just sedentary the other 22 hours of the day the goal is to break up periods of sitting with periods of activity to keep the blood flowing keep things moving keep the repair process happening a little longer than a few minutes later oh my goodness I just did a hit workout after upper body day and I am dead. My calves were cramping on the walk home. This might be brutal. A, it's been a while since I've done a HIIT workout because I only do it in the part of my menstrual cycle where I know my body can handle more stress. And I think last month, is that when we were traveling? I don't know. I didn't get in as many HIIT workouts as I was planning last month. And then, so it's been a while since I've done one and I wasn't doing as many as I would need for my body to be well adapted to it. And then B, I usually do sprints on those like curvy treadmills where essentially you control your own pace, like as fast as you run is as fast as it goes. And today I did it on like a regular treadmill where you gotta push the button and it's flat. And so I'm just not used to running on a flat surface, I suppose. So I think, I think my body got a bit of a shock, but it's good, it felt good, I feel good, things are good. So because we are living such an itinerant lifestyle, my snacks slash meals that are not breakfast or dinner have been more improvised than usual. Less reliant on my normal staples because obviously I can't have them all with me. So for snacks, I've been having a lot of peanut butter on rice cakes and then fruit with cinnamon. So I have half a pear with cinnamon on it and then rice cake, peanut butter, and honey drizzle on top. And I also made myself a little peppermint tea with some honey. This is gonna be my post-gym sneaky snack to hold me over until dinner. 12 seconds later. Alrighty, I am making dinner, so let me show you what I got. Making a big old salad bowl for me and the boyfriend. Yes, I am mixing it in a pot because this is the, the biggest thing that we have in this Airbnb that would actually fit all the lettuce so that I have room to mix this all in. So we have a bunch of lettuce and greens, there's some carrots, avocado, black beans, chopped up green apple, some cheese, drizzle of lemon juice, and a ton of olive oil, salt and pepper. I think that's all that's in here. And then I'm gonna put mine on top of some leftover rice, and then I am going to be adding some leftover steak bites on top. I just realized I forgot the almonds. I need to chop up some almonds. There we go. That's better. So between the steak, the almonds, and the black beans, I'm getting a good amount of protein in this salad. And that brings me to my next point, is eating adequate protein. Your workouts are really only half the equation. Actually, more like a quarter of the equation because there's four pillars of health, but one of the other pillars that is equally as important is nutrition. If your nutrition is slacking, you're not gonna get as much out of your workouts as you would if your nutrition were on point. And one of the biggest nutrition things that makes an impact on your workout efficacy and recovery is protein. I have multiple videos on protein that go into like how much protein you should be eating specifically and tips for eating more protein, myths about protein, all of that. So I'll link those down in the description box below. But in short, protein is the building blocks of your muscles. And so if you're in the gym, you're lifting heavy, you're breaking down your muscles in the gym, you need more building blocks to rebuild your muscles so that they can be bigger and stronger and accomplish what you want to accomplish. The general recommendation for resistance training is 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of lean body mass, not total body weight. If you don't know your lean body mass, you can estimate it with your goal weight. So if your goal weight is like 125 pounds, you should be eating about 0.7 to 1 times that of grams of protein, basically up to 125 grams of protein. So this has been something I've been prioritizing in my diet to make sure my recovery is on point as I push myself harder and harder in the gym. I am considering starting to track protein at this point just because my normal routine is so thrown off just being out of the country and not having access to like my normal stuff. I don't really know how much protein I'm getting. I feel like I'm kind of eating very similarly to how I normally do, where I normally get in the amount of protein that I would want, but I know that a lot of the protein I get does come from like the little filler things that I eat, like snacks and stuff like that. And I'm not having my normal snacks. So I don't know how much protein I'm eating. So I might start tracking just to make sure I'm eating enough at this point. Would probably just like track for a couple days, see where I'm at, see how I'm doing, make sure I'm 
doing good. That said, it is time to eat this enormous bowl of food and all of this goodness as well. And here we have the final steak salad with some rice on the bottom, all of the veggies. Good stuff. What do you think? You just want to eat it. You just want that salad. Have a bean. Oh, okay. Alrighty, I think that's all I got for you guys today. I just showered and I'm working on finishing up slash finalizing the workout programs that are going to be included in Fat Loss 101. When you register for the course, you get six workout programs to choose from. There is gym-based equipment, dumbbell only, and then resistance band and body weight only. And then within that, for each one, you can pick your frequency, either two to three days a week or four to six days a week. So basically, no matter your desired workout frequency or your equipment availability, I got you covered in Fat Loss 101. Since this is a what I eat a day, I may make a giant pot of tea with honey in it, just for the record. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. If you focus on these things that I mentioned in this video, guaranteed you are going to get better results from your workouts, which is going to help you lose more fat, build more muscle, get stronger, whatever your goals may be. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. If you liked this video, please give a big thumbs up. It really does support me and my channel. I really genuinely appreciate it. Please share this video with your friends, your family, your gym buddies. If you want to see more content from me, all about health and fitness, you can check it out over here. To see future videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the little notification bell so you get notified when I post a video, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.